Taking a concise HPI is one of the most difficult skills for new students to learn. There is no real good systematic way to learn how to obtain the HPI. But there is a better way. The H in HPI. This tool can be used at the most basic levels and will continue to grow with the learner and become more complex as does the learning requirements. In this video, we'll go through current methods used to obtain the HPI, rationale for using the H in HPI method, and demonstrate a simple example. There are currently multiple acronyms students use to aid in the history taking of a patient. Unfortunately, none of these mechanisms are complete when used in patient encounters. Students often focus on the checklist when using these tools. These mechanisms are also very limiting when used in an OSCE. In my experience working with students, I have found they often do not focus on the story and therefore miss many salient bits of information that could otherwise aid the diagnosis and treatment. So there is a better way. The H in HPI. Let's take a look at the big H in the H in HPI. The H, which stands for history, also looks like a timeline. And that, my friends, is not an accident. A single vertical line represents a point in time. Then we have another vertical line representing another point in time. This is a very simplified example of taking notes using the H and HPI method. We'll get back to this. Before we look a little deeper at that example, let's talk about some of the benefits to using the H and HPI method. Using this method allows for improved organization. It's also flexible across different cases. When recording the information, it's already in chronological order. You're also less likely to forget salient points and major bits of information. All right, so now that I've obtained all this information, I'm somehow supposed to take the data in the notes and quickly turn them into a chronological story. Well, the H and HPI method helps improve efficiency as you don't have to rewrite the information to present the patient. And finally, we have script building. Early in medical, nursing, and PA school, students are just beginning to develop clinical schemas or illness scripts. During this time, students often do not know the essential questions to ask for certain conditions. Using the H and HPI method will hopefully help you recognize temporal relationships with illness scripts. This is a template for abdominal pain. Most of this is pretty intuitive, right? This is a very basic example of an outline. In the future, we'll be adding more. Any of you who are more advanced than first year students can already kind of see where this is going and why it can be such a useful tool for many different types of patient encounters. And now that we took our notes, let's present the patient. We always write our chief complaint at the top. Then we have those notes we took during the encounter. I can present this patient using these notes. A 39-year-old female presents with extreme on and off abdominal pain from three days ago. The patient reports that three days ago, she had severe 8 out of 10 pain located in her right upper quadrant that was on and off in nature. This pain started shortly after she ate fried food. It lasted about three hours. She tried to take Tums with no relief. Patient also states that she had a similar episode about two months ago. Again, severe right upper quadrant pain, 8 out of 10 severity. It occurred shortly after she ate fried food and lasted several hours. The patient currently has no symptoms. Taking a concise HPI is one of the most difficult skills for new students to learn. I created this method after my own education and training and many years of teaching medical students and evaluating these students in patient history taking. I believe this tool not only helps with taking, recording, and learning illness scripts, it also helps organize and presenting the information in an efficient, coherent manner. I hope going through this has helped. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. 